welcome to the Spotlight Series. I'm your host, Scott Nerney. Don't forget to subscribe, share this information. This is very valuable education information for you, a loved one, a neighbor, a friend, um, or just someone you haven't met yet. It's very important information. Today I'm joined by Michael and Vito. Gentlemen have a nonprofit they'd like to speak to about, uh, the fentanyl crisis in the country and in Rhode Island. Welcome to the Spotlight Series. I'm sorry that we had to have you here, but I'm very happy to have you here and talk about what's going on. Thank you. Uh, Thank if you, you. could give Thank a little you, background of yourself so people kind of get to know you a little bit. So uh, I'm Mike English. I went to Ashford University. I got an international business degree and an MBA uh, emphasized in marketing and uh, knowing Vito and his tragedy with his son um, after his son's passing. We got together and we created a nonprofit organization, and we we're planning on educating and marketing the dangers of fentanyl throughout the state. Um, and I think it's a it's a noble cause, and I think Vito is is very personable and and and, and he's got skin in the game, and, and that makes much more realistic view on on the dangers of this. Epidemic. And okay. Okay. Um, I, I just want to say, Scott, that um, um, I hope this message gets out to, to, to the families and to the friends that have that know someone or that had that or have a loved one with a past history of, of drug use. Okay. Because uh, times have changed. Um, what's happening in Rhode Island is a, a lot of these people are ill informed and and they have a a, a bad day or a bad week or a bad month, the girlfriend left him or they lost their job or they have something in their life and they go back to using, um, go back to the, the old ways. Okay. Oh, they, go, they go back to, do, to doing something that they did 10 years ago or nine years ago or 15 years ago and it kills them. Okay. Times have changed. Um, um, whether uh, using uh, uh, drug use in this country has never in the history of the United States been more deadly than it is today. Okay, we are losing the, the we are losing one person every five minutes in this country from from uh, the government calls it overdose. I um, DEA calls uh, DEA calls it poisoning. Okay, what else can I help you with? Okay, and what is fentanyl? I, I can answer that. It um, does the medical field. So. Um, I, I have a medical and a, and a military background. Um, fentanyl was, was developed in, in 1959 as an, an opioid, which is synthetic painkiller. Okay, um, and it has, uh, it, it, it's, it's used throughout the world as a, um, as a painkiller. Okay, just like Oxycontin, Percocet, and other class one narcotics. Okay, um, it's it's very cheap to make, and and again, it's it's I use the word synthetic. Synthetic means it's man made. Okay, it doesn't come from a poppy field. It's not grown in a field. It's not grown in Afghanistan. It's not grown in Mexico. It's made from chemicals that are mixed together, and uh, it, it's it's very deadly. Okay, it, it very deadly if used. It, when put in the hands of, of, of evil and, and evil criminal elements, okay? And we're going to talk about volumes a little bit later of the difference between what is a dangerous amount of marijuana or, or methamphetamine versus fentanyl. And one of the things that you know, it gets a lot of press on the news is when the police find a whole trunk full of marijuana or, you know, uh, big bags of meth, you know, and there's little sugar packets of heroin, and that gets all the press. But the fentanyl, once in a while, you'll see one stopped at the border, uh, but there's not a lot of press about it happening out there because it, it's so small of an amount to come in. And we're going to talk about that because I think it's good to educate people that this huge problem really boils down to a small little container full. Um, and I think that's that's the concern that people need to understand is how easy it is to infiltrate 
the, the drug scene yes. or other areas, and God forbid if it gets into other uses and people use it as a weapon instead of a additive. Correct. So yeah. tell us a little bit more about the nonprofit. Give us the, um, the, the website or information about it so people can kind of look at that after they watch this video. So it's onepillcankillri.com, and it's basically giving the information of, of who we are, where you can contact us to help um, promote our organization's uh, mission, which is to try to save lives, putting signs across the state of Rhode Island to teach each individuals, neighbors, and everybody around them. Um, but also on the website, I got a array of people that have died over the years in fentanyl. One was 19, I believe the other one was 25, another one was 30, another one was 60, and then we just have a recent death of an eight year old. Basically, hitting every single age group, background scenarios of professionals to students to babies that just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And it, it takes away the stigma of, of what the drugs of yesterday it was only the, the homeless or only the drug addicts that are on the corners. These are, these are our, our brothers, our sisters, our mothers, our fathers, our next door neighbors, our teachers, our professors, our cops, our firemen, our, our doctors. And all are dying from this pill. Some because they went back to a, an addiction, others because they went to the wrong pharmacy online and got fentanyl in it, or some just happened to be lucky all these years and they got the wrong pill, or they crawled on the wrong carpet today and there's a pill on it and they put it in their mouth because they're a little baby and they ended up dying. I mean, the father was was a drug dealer. The little baby thought he was uh, they thought he was um, dying of uh, uh, reaction to strawberries and went to the hospital released the following day was found dead in his in his bed fentanyl has no care in the world who you are he's out to get you it's a killer in the night and, and, and no one's taking it realistically the cops are trying their hardest and the lawmakers are making it so you get away with bloody murder no one has accountability there's no 12 steps there's no talking about how you can get out of this only how we can make sure drug addicts are or, or people with drug substance abuse have this cozy bed of uh, that they can take drugs and, and still live to tell about it because someone has a knock-in box and someone knows how to bring you back to life it shouldn't be that way it should be teaching people how first not to touch the stuff second how to get off it 
and we don't have either one of those programs, and that's what we're trying to shoot for. Okay. Um, my, my neighbor is a uh, former DEA agent, and he works for the FDA, and he said one of the reasons why uh, things are so bad in this country is because the laws are so lax now, okay? Back in the 80s when, when Ronald Reagan was president, they stiffened the laws, okay? The, and and uh, uh, if now today, if you go to if you if you go to court and you for possession of, of whatever you have an illegal substance, you can you all you need to say is, well, I have a drug abuse problem, okay? I'm an addict, okay? And you get put into treatment, and then you stay in treatment for a little while. You're back on the street, and then you're selling again, okay? So um, the laws uh, uh, the um, drug use laws all over the country are being are being tightened up because of this massive fentanyl problem. But it seems like Rhode Island is going the other way. Okay. When you talk about the pill, uh, we'll kind of break it up a little bit. Where fentanyl is inputted into a lot of other drugs that people use to get the high feeling or disassociation feelings, like heroin, meth, cocaine. So it's in a lot of those drugs to give it the extra oomph, like you use it as a sedative. Um, but you're talking also about the illicit pharmacies, or what, what we'll say is, I wanted this pill, I couldn't get it from my doctor. It could be as much as Tylenol or codeine or Viagra or whatever it might be that you can't get. So you go online, you find what looks to be a great pharmacy. It's a decent price. It's not... $1,200 for the prescription, it's much less, and they'll give you a pill with a, maybe a little bit of the chemical, maybe not, some fentanyl in it, because to your words, it's dirt cheap and easy to make, I don't need to harvest a plant, and I'll put some fillers in there, and I'll stamp it, as some of the DEA sites have shown, the exact numbers and wording and color of the right pills, you think you're getting the right pill, and maybe some are, maybe some aren't, but sooner or later, you're going to get a bad one. It's a, it's a terrible thing to, to think, but there's evil out there. And when someone thinks they can make something that gives out a high, it gives you a return for its money because it's very addictive. Only 2% can, can get off it in the, in the numbers that they have given out in the data. So therefore, if I take that pill, even though it's not the right pill that I'm thinking I was ordering, it becomes the pill that I will order continuously. So you just created a, a avenue for that pharmacy from wherever it is, and it's usually outside the United States that we're ordering it from, and we're making sure that they stay for another day. And out of that, six out of ten people will die. Is it worth it? No. And, and for some reason, the DEA is fighting for it, the police departments, our local police departments even try to fight for it. And we got an attorney general that wants to make drugs legal again. I don't get it, and, and I don't see how it's going to benefit someone that's a, a addicted to drugs another day because you didn't put them in jail. To me, I, I think we're throwing the baby out with the bathwater on this theory. I think if you're dealing, in, in whether you're a pharmacy or a, or a local person, or even if you're at a party and you say, hey, Johnny, I got a pill for you. You'll make yourself feel better. And you know it's fentanyl and he doesn't. You should go to jail. That's delivery and, and intent. To me, I think that's a crime. Vito's yeah. buried his son. It's the most hardest thing that you could ever think of. To me, I don't think anybody's getting it. Yeah, they they... In Rhode Island right now, we were just informed that under 10 milligrams is a misdemeanor. So two milligrams will kill you. Do you mind if I hold up a sign? No, it's fine. Yeah, please. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't expect anybody to know the metric system in this country. And it's pretty obvious that the, the people that are mixing this in, in Mexico or whatever don't know the metric system either. Okay. So that white speck is, is, is fentanyl. Okay. And that is a penny. So you can see the amount of fentanyl. It, that white speck is two milligrams. That will kill you, the average human being. Okay. So in Rhode Island, under 10 milligrams is a misdemeanor. So if you do the math, you can basically go around in Rhode Island with enough fentanyl to kill five people 
and it's a misdemeanor, which is absolutely absurd, okay? And again, all over the country, the laws are going the other way, okay? Even, even, even San Francisco, many, many of, uh, 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 of the states, including San Francisco uh, or California, uh, they're, they're passing laws to, to, to make this um, any amount of fentanyl um, a felony, okay? And it, that's, that's the bottom line. So to put it in perspective, uh, and I think that's a great visual, um, let's talk about something that most people see every day. Uh, like we were talking in the green room earlier, how much is not a lot of fentanyl that people could kind of relate to and compare that to how many people it could kill? Okay, well, this, this is a sugar packet. This contains 4,000 milligrams, okay? So if this sugar packet were 100% fentanyl, it could theoretically kill 2,000 people. So you can see why this could be used as a bioterrorist uh, um, weapon. weapon. Okay. 2,000 people is an entire school, uh, more than a neighborhood, probably some of the smaller villages in Rhode Island. Yep. Right. 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 And what's happening is uh, many of the many of the, the I call them drug houses are now located in in nice neighborhoods like Warwick or or, or uh, North Kingston, South Kingston, whatever, and. And they, what they're doing is contaminating the neighborhoods with this, with this chemical, okay, which is deadly, okay. So it doesn't take a lot of work to bring that much fentanyl into the country. No, they come yeah. over with water bottles and then transfer it and make it into a powder. Yeah. So there's many ways to bring it over a border or even make it inside the state because it's not grown, it's, it's, it's manufactured. It's, um, um, if you fill up your backpack with this, with fentanyl, you can basically carry over enough fentanyl to kill every man, woman, and child in the, in the United States. Okay, I forgot, I don't have the exact numbers what DEA sees last year, but it was a, enough fentanyl to, to, to kill just about the entire population of the U.S. And that's what they found. Right. Yeah, we know that's a small percentage. Right, right. Of DEA doesn't know what amount got through, okay, in terms of counterfeit pills or actual fentanyl itself, okay. And like states like New York, they, they're finding a lot of um, people are using their girlfriends that will open up daycares to actually store the, the drugs inside the daycare. There was a little, little baby that uh, I think it was like three years old that died, and there was tons of, of fentanyl underneath the uh, baseboards of the facility because they didn't think the cops would ever search the facility. But yet the baby, when he died, they figured it out. So sometimes when you let things go and you say it's not a crime, you're putting a lot of other people that are side on the sidelines in great jeopardy. And to me, I can't understand why we're doing it. As grown-ups, as adults, as leaders, we're supposed to protect the innocent. We're supposed, supposed to protect the most vulnerable. And right now, we're not. We're not, we're not caring about anybody, but what feelings we're going to hurt tomorrow. I don't care about whose feelings are going to hurt. I'm more, more worried about people waking up and, and able to see their children. Their mothers, their fathers, their brothers and their sisters. When you let fentanyl rule us and not us rule fentanyl and putting the dealers where they need to go, you're opening the door for, for chaos, complete chaos. Yeah. And I know you use a different word than overdose, but I'm going to use that only because I'm quoting right. um, a statistics that shows the teens and uh, from what you saw the adult level is the same that 84% of fatal overdoses involve fentanyl. Yep. Right. Whether it's an overdose of pills that had fentanyl in it, I, I need two of these today to get through my headache, or I want to smoke some marijuana that I didn't buy at a licensed uh, purveyor, or I'm using meth or heroin because I just have to get through or bring you know back the glory days. 84%. Uh, so you might as well consider every drug that's out there is just a time bomb waiting to get the one that gets you the, the worst case. And some of these kids are 12 years old. And it's eighty four percent. Yeah. That means we're 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 not protecting our children. We're not allowing the cops to protect our children. We're letting the lawmakers make it legalized so drug dealers can come in and kill our children. 
how we have parents by letting this happen. We need yeah. to stand up and, and, and stand up for what's right, stand up for our children and stand up to protect the ones that can't protect themselves. Yeah, and the other thing, Scott, is uh, what DEA is finding uh, in addition to fentanyl and, and, uh, and street drugs is xylazine, which is a horse tranquilizer. Uh, and xyl xylazine is, is um, pretty much just as deadly as, as fentanyl. Now, the one thing about xylazine is, is it does not respond to Narcan. So when states hand out these massive amounts of Narcan and they give, they're basically telling everyone, oh, it's okay, you can go out and, and, and um, buy Coke or, or, or whatever you think you're getting Coke, okay, or, or buy heroin if you think you're getting heroin, or go buy um, uh, pills from an online pharmacy that you, that you know is illegit. Uh, you're giving people a false sense of security um, because it, uh, it's not all fentanyl anymore. Okay, it might be a certain percentage of fentanyl, a certain percentage of, of xylazine, and uh, and the rest might be uh, baby powder. It could be baking soda. It could be uh, it, it could be uh, it could be flour. I mean, who knows? Okay, but um, the the. The reports that we're getting back from the police departments and DEA is that uh, there is no more heroin out there. There is no more coke. It's it's it, the, the two drugs that are ruling the streets are fentanyl and xylazine. Okay, both very deadly. So, in addition to going to your website and getting more information, you'd suggest that people get in touch with their lawmakers in the state and federal to try to bring awareness to the cause. Most definitely, we gotta we gotta let the attorney general know his job is to to prosecute the laws, not try to make murderers set free. We're not out here to, to make safe havens for dealers to kill our children yeah. or, 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 or our families or our friends. We're out here to protect ourselves and for the Attorney General to think he got elected for office for anything else but to do his job and put people in jail that, that have broken the law and that are clearly selling drugs that are killing our, our children. Is is hypocritical. It's it's, yeah. it's um, mind-boggling. The, I think the message we want to get across today is there is no if you there is no safe amount of fentanyl or xyl or horse tranquilizer or xyl xylazine. Uh, um, uh, one gram, five grams, six grams. It should all be made illegal. Okay, and it should be a felony. Okay, and that is. That is one of the many ways to stop it. Okay. You start put And, and then, if you then, sell the drug that, that kills someone, you should go to jail for murder. Open and ending to the yeah, question. 30 years mandatory. Okay. Okay. No Gentlemen, I, I thank you very much for coming and educating. Uh, one last time, give us the website that people can go to to get more information. OnePillCanKillRI.com okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. A counterfeit, it's a mimic of a real product. If you think about sneakers or any kind of fashion wear or even money, right? You can see those products side by side and you can't see the difference between the two. When it comes to medication, the same thing applies. They look just like each other and you can't make that distinction by visually looking at it. Scientists can't even do it. Police officers can't do it. There's a little bit of risk when we talk about merchandise, but there's a very grave risk when we're talking about medications. My name is Joe Bazinko. I'm a senior research chemist with the Drug Enforcement Administration, also known as the DEA. So a counterfeit pill would be one that looks just like a, a legitimate pill, something you'd get from a pharmacist. We've been analyzing both legitimate and illegitimate pills, or counterfeits, if you will, for decades now. So this is something that's been ongoing. It is now seemingly increasing more in the danger associated with what's contained in those counterfeit pills versus what we've seen in the past. We cannot visually look at a pill and say, oh, that's counterfeit or not. You really don't know until you do the analysis. I can tell you in my 25 years of being a chemist, I have never seen more fentanyl than I'm seeing now. This is not an isolated problem. It is everywhere. Fentanyl has legitimate use in the medical field for the treatment of pain. 
illicit fentanyl. That is the fentanyl that we see put into these counterfeit medications. It's manufactured in these dirty labs. There's no great way to measure how much goes into each tablet. It really is reckless. When you're mixing a pill up, you have to mix all the ingredients together, and then you have to put them in the machine, and the machine will punch them out. The problem is with these pills, it's not easy to mix everything evenly. Let's say you had a, uh, a mortar and pestle. And if I were to put in, say, 10 packets of white sugar, and then say one packet of brown sugar, and if you could sit there and grind and mix and grind and mix, you're gonna find there's gonna be hot spots and cold spots in there. An example of a hot spot and a cold spot, you'll see a lot of brown in one area, a lot of white in another area. It wouldn't be uniform which is to say when it went in to make the pills, that dark spot of brown sugar that was in that would eventually make a very high load on a pill. That pill would have a lot of fentanyl in it. The research suggests that two milligrams of fentanyl can cause an overdose. The average pill that we see and analyze here has more than that in it. One pill can very much lead to an overdose. So two milligrams is a very small amount. It's literally just a few grains. If you look at a, a plain sugar packet, and that sugar packet has one gram of sugar in it, using the math of two milligrams, that sugar packet can kill 500 people if it were fentanyl. I want you to think about what 500 people is. 500 people could be your senior class. 500 people could be half of your school. It could be a part of your town. When I have a, a fentanyl exhibit brought into the lab, before anything happens at all, I'm gonna put on my protective gear. I'm gonna protect my clothing wearing a laboratory jacket. I'm gonna protect my breathing and my airway using a big heavy mask with filters on it. I'm gonna protect my eyesight so that nothing gets splashed in my eyes. I'm also gonna protect my hands wearing gloves. Even with all of that, we still work in a fume hood, which has vacuum at the back that draws out anything like hazardous vapors or any of the powders. These are just some of the preparation we do when we begin to work with counterfeits, because again, they're unknowns and we prepare for the worst. I've actually had an exposure of fentanyl to where we had a laboratory accident on a fentanyl submission to us. I was rushed to the hospital and I spent the day in the emergency department. So even for those of us that have training, those of us that have the expertise and the equipment working on our side, it's still a danger and still a hazard and can still represent a grave threat to your life. The danger that we see coming from these counterfeit pills is you really don't know what's in them. Fentanyl is a threat that affects everyone in every location, at every age group, and it is not worth the risk. And the fact of the matter is, once you take that tablet, there's no going back. There's no backspace, there's no control alt delete. If it didn't come from that pharmacist, it could be counterfeit. It could end your life, impacting all your loved ones and your friends.